Welcome back to DS Trucks. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how we wash our trucks. Now, if you follow the channel, then you know that we plow snow with our trucks and washing is very important. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how we approach it, cleaning the paint, uh, cleaning the engine, all that kind of stuff is uh, what we're going to talk about in this video. So we're going to jump in the truck and go to the car wash. And on the way to the car wash, we can talk about the tires. We have Wrangler Duratrack tires on the truck. Here's a look at the tread pattern. Very aggressive. These were highly, highly, highly recommended. But we'll talk about the performance of these tires once we're inside of the truck. All right, guys. So inside of the truck and I'm going to be driving. Sorry that I am driving with my phone. And I know that a lot of uh, followers have complained that they do not like uh, when I'm driving with my phone, but I am apologizing in advance and I uh, don't know what else to say about that. But anyway, um, these tires, guys, these tires, I am very impressed with these tires. I think they drive pretty good. Um, the traction is pretty good. I, I really don't have any complaints. I, the one thing that I wish is that I got, that I got true 35s in. One of the subscribers pointed out that I do not have 35s. Thank you for letting me know that. I literally went into a discount tire. I ordered, I told them 35 inch tires. I want 35 inch tires off of a trimmer. And they came back and said, hey, we have these OEM takeoffs. They probably came off of a trimmer, uh, but they have a hole in them. We can patch the hole and give you a huge discount and whatever, whatever. So I got the tires for a couple hundred dollars less. Not a big deal though for me. Like I wasn't really thinking about a discount at all when I got the tires. Like I wasn't. I I, I figured you know I spend so much money maybe I'll just go ahead and take the discount. Uh, I guess maybe I should just like have my spending have my spending more under control and take advantage of this discount. Whatever, whatever. So that's what I did. I, I took advantage of a discount and I got two tires with two holes. <laughs> so the problem is. I specifically wanted a 37 inch tire off of a trimmer or the same size of a trimmer or the same thing that would go on a trimmer. And if it wouldn't have fit, I would rather them say, hey, it won't fit. But instead, they insisted that 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 I did have the 35s, that they were putting the 35s, that I was going away with the 35s. And it turns out they are not 35s. Brakes work good. Tires aren't spinning. Oh, a little spin on takeoff there. We're in two-wheel drive. Um, so they did have me thinking that I had 35-inch tires, and I do not. That's the only complaint. Now, they are pretty much 33-inch tires. Um, they're, you know, on the bigger side of the 33-inch spectrum, but... Um, I, I'm not really making a big fuss about it or getting them redone or anything because uh, at the end of the day, it probably is going to work out better for me to be with this size tire plowing snow and everything like that. Um, the height, the height of the, um, the height of the truck would be too high compared to the other plows and it would change the plow settings and they wouldn't match up between the trucks anymore like right now as it sits this truck sits a little higher than the 450 and the plows will still match up if i unhook this one i can hook it to the 450 with the 35s that would be a no-go and they don't look any worse um they still look pretty much just as cool just the fitment's a little uh there's a little more clearance and i mean you really can't you really can't tell too big a difference uh, just by looking they still look super aggressive and uh definitely impressed by by them so far now i do think the falcon wild peaks that i had on an old on my old f-150 old green i do think those falcon wild peaks were a little bit better but they were in a different class they were um f-150 tires so a little bit lighter rated tire and that meant that they had a different compound. This this heavy duty compound that you get, uh, if you were to get a comparable Falcon Wild Peak, the compound would not be as grippy in the heavy duty form as it was in the light duty form. So maybe that's why that Wild Peak did feel like it gripped a little better. Those tires that I had on my 150 were so good. It really made that old POS truck 
hook up. I mean, the transfer case was tired. Like, it didn't really have any bite in the transfer case. Like, sometimes the, when you put it in four-wheel drive, like, the the rear would would spin, but the front would kind of spin. So, uh, those tires were amazing as far as traction. Now, like I said, it's be, it could be because of the weight class of the tire, and I think they use more silicone, silicone rubber or something like that. So, take that with a grain of salt. I don't see why I, I would think that it would be comparable to a wild peak but i'd have to literally have both in order to know if these are better they were cheaper actually i think the wild peaks went up falcon wild peaks have went up in price compared to these tires but i think um maybe the look of these tires maybe looks a little better than the wild peaks the sidewall maybe uh it's not over the top these these tires they're 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 sidewall it's not totally over the top it's kind of mature in my opinion it's not crazy in your face it's more like uh just a just a you know got a little text there from someone it's not crazy over the top it's just a nice looking tire to sidewall uh the way the sidewall looks so um so far it's been performing good they drive nice and soft like that feel like i feel like the ride has been improved as far as how soft it feels um one oh another good thing about these tires is the weight ratings are pretty dang good um so this this tire in a 35 inch size which is not what i got but if you were to get this tire in a 35 inch size then the weight rating would be 4,000 pounds. Would be really good. And this size, I think it's 3,700 pounds. Still pretty good. But someone, there, look, one little car, this little teeny tiny car, takes up the biggest spot, like the biggest car wash. Um, so we'll have to get this little one. Um, so if you get the 35 inch tires in these in this uh Wrangler door track the weight rating is higher than the commercial tires that I have on my 450 so that's something to think about like you get like a 4000 pound tire for a tire that's rated for 4000 pounds in the form of 35 so the the uh, trimmer super duty comes with some pretty good strong rated tires now as far as it being too soft or whatever I don't know uh as far as them lasting or a lot of a lot of people have said they won't last you a long time. I don't know. Um, I'm not one of those guys that really worry too much about how long they last. I mean, it does matter. But keep in mind, guys, we got 19,000 miles on this truck, and we went through a set of um, Continentals. They were pretty cooked. And for our usage, mileage is relevant is the point I'm getting at. So mileage not a huge deal performance is more of a of a concern for us and i think um with the performance of this tire the mileage might not be quite so good but then again maybe it will be because they start off with so much meat that they're still going to be like what the new tires were once these tires are used up they're going to have the tread that the oem continentals had after freaking 20,000 miles i would think but anyway let's go ahead and talk about how we wash our trucks and all involved all right so washing your truck after plowing snow this applies to any truck but most certainly applies to a plow truck so we're dealing with the spray do-it-yourself car wash it's cold out here you don't got time to really be messing in my opinion to be messing with the brushes and all that stuff basically all i do is i swipe my card and i set the system over to wax i set it right there to the wax setting and then i leave it there and i'll just spray wax pressure high pressure spray wax the whole truck the whole plow the rims the tires and i'll get up under there as best i can i'll get down low spray up under the truck and uh spray wax the truck and this is how it looks now it's not going to be perfect though the point about doing this is it doesn't come out absolutely perfect it looks pretty good though it looks good enough now when conditions are better i'll go ahead and wash the truck properly but from in between snowstorms we just we put most of our money on spraying it off we'll spend a good amount of money a good amount of time spraying it 
Now, as far as the engine cleaning goes, what I like to do is spray down the engine, being careful around your fuse boxes, not directly spraying your alternator, but I like to do that after washing the truck. I like to wash the outside first, let the engine cool all the way off so that you're not shocking the exhaust manifolds. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to crack the manifolds uh, by putting cool water on a hot part. So I'm going to go ahead and wash the truck. I'll touch base with you guys once I get everything done. All right, so basically what I like to do is spray it down like so. So that's the front file. Let's show how this actually comes off. Now basically, like I say, I wax this every time. See how it looks white? The white coming out of the gun? Every single time, this is all I do. And I think the wax accumulates and the next wash, the dirt falls right off. And I don't do a final rinse after this. I just do it just like this. And I get all of that dirt. And I don't rinse the wax off. That's the point. This is a work truck, so make it in like spot free or spotless not the goal i don't do a spot free rinse after i just do this this is all they get it's just the wax no soap no scrubbers no nothing now with the signage i like to keep the gun a little bit further away and get a little closer for if i see a speck i can spray the speck if i feel like it won't come off but it's not a big deal a little speck's not a big deal Running board, Get all that off the running board, so that it will look respectable. It's very important for the truck to look respectable because if you don't clean the truck, when all the guys get in the truck, they're gonna mess up the truck. Start off with a clean the truck, they'll respect it a lot more. They'll take better care of it. So if you let it be trash. They're going to trash it every time they touch it. So, cleaning the truck is very important. So, another thing I like to do is cross-directional cleaning. So, we're not spray brushing. So, we go left and right. So, we go up and down. We do an angle. This is cross-directional. It makes it so it doesn't look all funny. Because you didn't wipe or take a brush to it. It'll look like you can see the spray marks almost. Like the wind mark so I like to hit it from a couple different angles a couple different angles cross cutting it if you could call it that and that looks like that boom 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 get all that it's gonna get wet it's gonna get cold it's gonna start to shiver it don't really matter how cold it is outside just, just kind of a it's just an indication of how much shivering you're gonna be doing the colder that it is outside the more shivering you're going to be doing so you, you can shiver pretty you can pretty much shiver through almost any cold especially here in michigan it doesn't get too cold i'm just wearing a hoodie right now i don't really like wearing too much gear because you get too comfortable if you wear too many coats and stuff you don't want to ever get too too comfortable you want to stay in some harsh you want to keep the harsh conditions around just in case that, that way you'll be ready so Getting down low, getting up under. Just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and I'll touch base and show you guys how I do the engine. Alright guys, so now we're on to the engine. We've cleaned everything else on the truck. We've let the engine cool off a bit. So what do we what do I like to do? Now this obviously you follow your owner's manual and stuff and don't void uh, the warranty or do anything dangerous. But for, for my this is strictly my opinion. But I like to uh, have the engine off, have it cooled off for a minute, and then uh, just keeping my distance and spraying all the salt out of the motor. I do like to hit my batteries. The alternator will get wet, but I'm not directly trying to wet the alternator, but it will get wet. Um, just staying a little bit farther back. Oops. This this area here is fair game. Careful with your labels, though. You don't want those to come off. Uh, you can still see it's steaming from the exhaust manifold. So. The big factor in cleaning up your engine is your is your batteries. You don't want the acid to sit on top of the batteries. All that. Okay, here. 
Don't want to focus too long in the brake master cylinder. The brake fluid is going to be hydroscopic. You don't want to do that. That's uh, pretty good for this side. Um, kind of reach over to the other side a little bit. And that's it and that's that. That's it and that's that, guys. Nothing crazy. Nothing too terribly crazy. Um, but yeah, so I got a couple more minutes on my timer. I'm going to finish this out and I'll touch base with you guys inside of this truck. Alright guys, and that's it and that's that. We washed the truck, sprayed the engine down a little bit, and that is it. Now with the engine spraying, you don't really need to do that. It's just, in our situation, getting some of that salt out of the motor bay. Uh, just so it could possibly not corrode as bad on the engine bay, all the nuts and bolts and stuff. But uh, I think in the previous video, I've shown how nasty the uh, exhaust manifolds have gotten so it kind of is what it is in that department but be careful if you're going to do it um, try to stay away from your uh, critical components you can get a little bag and cover uh, some little critical components you can cover your fuse boxes you could cover your alternator if you want um, not a huge deal it's not like the alternator can't take a little mist but Still, uh, for the purpose of the video, it's important to mention that you can cover up a lot of the electronics. Um, but yeah, that's how we are doing our stuff. Um, my name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. See you guys in the next video. Over and out.